when Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield made a supposedly unexpected appearance in the new Netflix three-part documentary, Who Killed Jill Dando? Blinker Hole sat up and took notice. It highlights the murder of BBC Crime Watch presenter Jill Dando, on April 26, 1999, outside her London home in Fulham, and covers the events that unfolded following that day, the manhunt that ensued and that unbelievably, the mystery has never been solved. Or has it? Could there be a reason, a specific one, why the truth has never been revealed? Yes, we believe so. But we also believe that there is a whole network of like-minded individuals that are ready and willing to risk their reputations, careers and even their lives to finally bring down those responsible. The problem is, however, is that once one case is solved, light will be shone very brightly on others which ultimately leads down a very long, dark and dangerous rabbit hole indeed. The case of Jill Dando is far more complicated than anyone can ever imagine, and solving it, opens up a vast and very ugly can of worms, that spreads over decades. The truth, in fact, could make one extremely ill. Everything you've ever known, everything you've ever believed, turned on its head, lies upon lies, upon lies, which in our opinion, can only be constructed by evil. Blinkerhole has had to take several days out to ground ourselves, the whole thing has made us very ill shaky and sick to our stomach in fact, which is why this video has been slightly delayed. It has caused us to take a step back, re-evaluate the intentions of this channel and how far we are willing to go to bring you the truth. We are desperately hoping that the efforts of some very brave people will come to fruition soon. Those brave people are the very people that the public have been brainwashed to hate. That's all we can say on the matter. Anyway, back to the documentary which shows a clip of Philip Schofield on this morning alongside his then-co-host Holly Willoughby, in an episode that aired on the 23rd anniversary of Jill Dando's death. In one of our recent videos, we detailed a long-running feud between Philip Schofield and Jill Dando's colorful former agent John Roseman and we found it particularly interesting that all three of them featured in the program. We had previously discovered that in 2013, John Roseman had written a scathing article about Holly Willoughby, who had at that time been presenting This Morning for only four years, in which he questioned how it came to be that she was on her way to a £10 million fortune. Philip Schofield, who threatened to quit This Morning if Holly Willoughby wasn't given the plum role of his sidekick, fiercely leapt to her defence, lashing out at Roseman, insisting that his co-star and bestie was worth every penny, blasting, when did the rants of a washed up, out of touch, inaccurate, old TV agent become relevant. In another post on Twitter, Schofield went a lot further, sniping, he's got to be careful, or we might start discussing him. And that would be interesting. As stated in the docuseries, which we noticed has a rather dramatic and interesting intro, Roseman was described as a man who took no punches, who had allegedly been known to show his feelings with a baseball bat. Interestingly, one of the most prominent theories about what happened to Jill was that a hitman could have been responsible. Fast forward to the present day and we have the story of Holly Willoughby being put under police guard after Gavin Plum, who, in our opinion bears a striking resemblance to Barry George, was accused of hiring a hitman. Barry George was found guilty of Jill's murder and was jailed for eight years. It was only when a single microscopic particle of residue that just so happened to be found in his coat pocket was discounted, that his conviction was judged unsafe by the Court of Appeal and quashed in 2007. Blinkerhole also noticed that a point seemed to be made in the docuseries that Barry George had a habit of taking multiple photographs of women going about their day, some sitting on benches, some holding items up to obscure their face and some just walking along the street, and strangely enough, some with houses in the background. Jill was apparently found deceased outside her front door but could the rolls of then undeveloped camera film, discovered at Barry George's house have captured something that a certain person would rather not see the light of day. Possibly. In the Dando docuseries, apart from the numerous and blatant mentions of Princess Diana, there is one particular clip which stands out to us. A person is seen typing in Who Killed Jill Dando, which also brings up a small list of other cases. The searcher then scrolls down the page and clicks on a video by this morning featuring Holly Willoughby who is saying, What happened that morning remains a mystery, the crime unsolved, her killer never held to justice. On the right hand side there is also a list of other videos featuring interviews that took place on this morning. The clip of Holly was taken from this morning in 2022 when the 23rd anniversary of Dando's death was approaching. The introduction from Philip, who once said to Amol Rajan, I have brought myself down. Together with Holly Willoughby, 
came ahead of an in-depth interview with investigative journalist Mark Williams Thomas, who in 2015 wrote in the Daily Mirror that he theorized that Jill was murdered by the London underworld for her work on Crime Watch. We'd perhaps better hold our tongue on our thoughts on that man. Let's hope he can soon rectify a few of his supposed theories. Talking of outlandish theories, Jill's brother, Nigel, appeared on ITV's Lorraine where he discussed his thoughts on the reasons behind Jill's tragic death. But before we get to his words of wisdom, a bit of case background. Jill's home, 29 Gowan Avenue, was up for sale at the time as she was rarely at the property. Upon her arrival at 11.32 am on the day, she was reportedly shot in the head with a single bullet. Her neighbor, Helen Doble, discovered her just 14 minutes later. Righty ho then. Moving swiftly on. At 11.47 am, Officers from London's Metropolitan Police arrived before Jill was rushed to the nearby Charing Cross Hospital. However, at 13.03 p.m., she was declared dead by medical staff. Oh to be a fly on the wall. But while some believe that Jill was the victim of a targeted attack, her brother has other beliefs. During an appearance on ITV's Lorraine, journalist Nigel said, We followed all the theories and the twists and turns of the case. But when you strip it right back and you look at the roads that the police went down to follow up these theories, at the end of the day, none of them really held water, there was no evidence. My theory, which I still stick to, I don't know how true it is, people may say it's quite fanciful but that Jill was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Indeed. One of the most interesting parts of the documentary for Blinkerhole was the interview with former career criminal, Noel Razor Smith, an armed robber turned writer. Smith was in HMP Belmarsh when Barry George, who was wrongly convicted of 37-year-old Dando's murder in 2001, arrived after being charged. Asked if he had any clues as to who killed Dando, Smith said, I don't really want to talk about that for my own safety. But there are rumors in the criminal world, let's put it that way. It's not who you would think and it's not Barry George. It was a professional hit. Asked if he could give any insight into why she was shot dead. He shook his head immediately and said, No. If I tell you why, you'd know who did it. Blinkerhole believes that Noel Razor Smith's last line, If I tell you why, you'd know who did it, is the most important sentence in the whole documentary and we believe it is the exact reason why Jill Dando's death has never been solved. The case of Jill Dando, we believe, is the first key that needs to be turned in order to unlock and solve the mysteries behind many other doors the opening of which would be so shocking that you would never want to watch a crime documentary again. Crime Watch. What an absolute joke. True crime. Well that would become a thing of the past. If you are interested in getting to the truth, we suggest that you take out a pen and paper and study the docuseries for yourself and we don't mean just watch it. We mean really watch it. Frame by frame. The clues are there if you only take the time to look. Interestingly, we noticed it isn't the only documentary that Netflix, who reportedly paid Prince Harry and Meghan Markle $100 million in 2020, has recently chosen to air. Maxine which revisits the Soam murders, is also equally revealing and worth a very close watch. So back to that can of ugly, horrifying worms, which is slowly but surely being prized open. Who will crawl out of it, like a twisted, gnarly old rotten monster, and will they hold their hands up to everything they've done? Unfortunately, only time will tell. Please like and subscribe for more journeys through the blinker hole. For entertainment purposes only. Keep up to date with our latest investigations and hit the join button. If you like what we do, send us a super thanks. Official blinker hole merchandise is available in store.